the patrons have spoken once again, and this time we have Vileplume. This Pokemon bearing a huge flower on its head has been pedal dancing its way into our hearts since the first generation. It even had a role in the first movie under the ownership of Nisha, better known as the trainer with Shell Shocker the Blastoise. Vileplume was also Erica's strongest Pokemon in red and blue, and fire red and leaf green. Today, we're going to see how Vileplume and its flower power fared in the competitive scene. So we ask, how good was Vileplume actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. In Gen 1, everyone say it with me now. Unfortunately, Vileplume was downright unusable in the inaugural OU metagame. Being weak to Psychic in the Psychic-dominated RBY metagame was a death sentence for pretty much all but Victory Bell, who at least had Wrap, a solid speed stat, and an auto-crit Razor Leaf. Victory Bell was so good that it completely outclassed Venusaur, who in turn entirely outclassed Vileplume. Vileplume lacked Razor Leaf and had a speed stat so abysmal, it couldn't even outspeed Gen 1 main stay Exeggutor, one of the best Pokemon in the metagame that was also its most direct competition. There was no hope for Vileplume in OU, and it turns out, not really in UU either. Not only was UU also dominated by psychics like Kadabra and Hypno, as well as other problems for Grass Psychics and Haunter and Dragonite, Venusaur was in UU as well, meaning there really was no reason to use Vileplume at all. Even if Venusaur hadn't been in UU, it wouldn't have helped Vileplume anyway. Venusaur itself seriously struggled to make any sort of impact, and Vileplume would have just had it worse. So it's a rough start for our flowery friend. Vileplume got some nice buffs in Gen 2. It received instant recovery in Moonlight, allowing it to make better use of its nice bulk by being able to weather more hits. It also got Leech Seed, one of the best defensive offensive moves, allowing it to drain other Pokemon while keeping itself healthy. It was able to land its Leech Seeds effectively because pure grass types like Blossom would be scared of another one of Vileplume's new toys, Stab Sludge Bomb, which piled on the residual damage even further with its 30% poison rate. Now it did have its special Special defense drop from 100 to 90 as Gen 1's special stat split in two, but it could have been a lot worse. Just look at the massive drop off Tangela had. Vileplume was still plenty bulky. However, it wasn't going to be enough to make it into OU. Venusaur still existed, got all the buffs Vileplume had got, got to keep its base special defense stat of 100 while maintaining its higher HP, was still faster, which made a world of difference against threats like Machamp and Vaporeon, and even got growth, giving it an option to sweep. However, it wasn't all bad because this time around, Vileplume was quite a decent Pokemon in UU. It checked electrics like Ampharos, Magneton, and Electabuzz, completely dominated annoying opposing grass types like Jumpluff and the aforementioned Blossom, allowing it to spread Leech Seeds and Sludge Bomb poisons against much of the metagame, while even threatening to shut something down with Sleep Powder. Sure, there were plenty of Rest Talkers, but they didn't care for being forced to rest by Vileplume's Sludge Bombs, which was especially annoying if Vileplume was paired with Spikes and opened up opportunities for its harder-hitting teammates. For example, Scyther was a lot more dangerous at switching into and setting up on Slowking and Hypno that had just been forced to rest. And Vileplume didn't even have to run Sleep Powder if it felt it was going to just get blanked by those Rest Talkers. It could run Giga Drain, which allowed it to counter the dangerous Kabutops while providing yet another option to keep itself healthy. And Vileplume was by no means a dominant metagame superstar. Its poison typing making it neutral to Earthquake as opposed to Resistant meant it was always going to have serious competition with Blossom, who was able to switch into the stack of the best Pokemon in the tier, Needle Queen. However, its poison typing was also a blessing defensively, as it meant it was neutral to Pinsir's powerful stab hidden power bug, and offensively, Stab Sludge Bomb was a seriously excellent weapon. Vileplume wasn't an automatic addition to most teams, but it was still a solid Pokemon in the GSC UU metagame. Once more, Venusaur took the OU spotlight over Vileplume in Generation 3. Well, technically borderline, but Venusaur was actually used in OU, as opposed to something like Crobat. Anyway, this was good news for Vileplume, because it meant its biggest competition wasn't going to be getting in its way in UU, where it became an excellent Pokemon. Its primary set was the Sunny Day Chlorophyll Sweeper, which boosted its hidden power fire and allowed it to unleash its strongest stab in Solar Beam. It was made even better by the fact that it could put something out of commission with Sleep Powder. It was a terrifying late game sweeper, easily cleaving through softened teams, and several teams passed combine boost to it with Lunatone, making Vileplume almost impossible to stop. Vileplume wasn't just an offensive juggernaut though, it was also a great defensive Pokemon. Its Leech Seed and Sludge Bomb combination was as synergistic as ever, and made even better by Gen 3's Leech Seed buff, as well as there being up to 3 layers of spikes to accentuate the passive damage Vileplume piled on. The lack of rest talk everywhere made Sleep Powder a great weapon as well, especially since 
Once the insomnia packing hypno that would block sleep powder absolutely hated a sludge bomb poison, though Vileplume could replace it with hidden power grass, now no longer tied to horrible IVs that cripple its bulk as it would have in Gen 2, in order to increase coverage against notable threats like Golem and Kabutops. As a bonus, Vileplume now packed another excellent utility move, Aromatherapy, allowing it to rid itself and its teammates of debilitating status. All in all, Vileplume was an amazing Pokemon in the advanced UU metagame. It was both one of the most dangerous offensive threats and one of the best defensive utility Pokemon. Tragedy struck in the fourth generation. Venusaur dropped to UU, thus rendering Vileplume entirely unviable. It couldn't even attempt to pull off a Sunny Day Chlorophyll set, one of its few advantages over Venusaur, because Victory Bell and Exeggutor were just straight up better. It was even cruelly teased by the occasional talk of Venusaur being banned, but that never happened. As such, Vileplume dropped to NU. Thankfully, there it was quite a solid Pokemon. It wasn't the premier Sunny Day Sweeper, as both Victory Bell and Exeggutor were all also NU, but it could function on dedicated sun teams alongside those two in order to really pile the hurt on the opponent. It loved the power boost it now had via Life Orb as well. Vileplume's bread and butter set, however, was the defensive variant. While it didn't stop the metagame's topmost threats, it had stopped many others such as Shiftree, Manetric, Hitmonchan, and Floatzel, to name a few. This made Vileplume an integral cog in common, effective defensive cores. It made for excellent pairing with other bulky staples such as Slowking and Regirock, covering their weaknesses and having its weaknesses covered allowing them to switch back and forth while taking minimal damage and dishing their own out. The Leech Seed plus Sludge Bomb combination was more effective than ever with the omnipresence of Stealth Rock. And in fact, Sludge Bomb is what made Vileplume such a tough Pokemon to switch in on and take momentum back from. Even without Rocks Up, a Sludge Bomb poison would absolutely ruin Charizard. And opposing poison types were not especially keen on switching into Vileplume to prevent their teammates from getting poison. Skunk Tank and Haunter were not only vulnerable to Leech Seed, but they also struggled struggled to hurt Vileplume much themselves. The same went for the tier's only common steel type, Magneton, who was even worse against Vileplume. This made Vileplume absolutely incredible at playing offense while on defense, and while it did not wall the entire metagame, it was incredibly difficult to switch into safely, while covering several key threats and reinforcing the integrity of its team's defensive core. As a result, Vileplume was an excellent Pokemon in DPP and U. From Vileplume's perspective, the fifth generation felt like a practical joke that was more cruel than it was funny. On the bright side, Venusaur wasn't going to outclass it, as it was too busy crushing OU. However, it was thanks to Venusaur's Dream World ability, Chlorophyll. That part felt a little nasty. It's as if Game Freak went out of their way to take away the one thing Vileplume could do that Venusaur couldn't. But at least Venusaur wouldn't be getting in Vileplume's way, which is all in all a pretty good deal. Vileplume was set to have its place as a decent to good defensive Pokemon in the tier below UU once again, with that tier this time being RU. It enjoyed the 5th generation's power and PP buff to Giga Drain, which was a small but significant boost. However, Black and White 2 came around and introduced Regenerator Amoongus, which was absurd. Amoongus outclassed Vileplume more than Venusaur could ever dream of, at least defensively. And while it did admittingly lack Leech Seed and Aromatherapy, it made up for it with one of the most ridiculous abilities in the game that made it incredibly difficult to break through, alongside a Titanic HP stat and even a 100% sleep move in Spore. This meant Vileplume was going back to NU, which was a tier lower than the generation before. However, its issues didn't even end there, because it had to compete with Eviolite Roselia, which supported its team with spikes, of all things, and even had Natural Cure to shrug off Olomomola Burns, all while matching Vileplume's base special attack of 100. Now, that being said, Vileplume was still a fine Pokemon. Its significantly higher physical defense lent it an incredibly important edge over Roselia, as did its ability to hold leftovers. Well, technically Black Sludge, but same difference. Anyway, high physical defense and Black Sludge allowed Vileplume to save off Sock's vicious choice ban, close combats, even with Stealth Rock Up, which Roselia couldn't dream of doing. Roselia also couldn't run Sleep Powder alongside Spikes, while Vileplume was free to pseudo-KO an opposing Pokemon thanks to the 5th generation's brutal sleep mechanics. Vileplume's superior longevity thanks to Black Sludge also allowed it to more easily check the key metagame threats it was supposed to stop. In addition to Sock, this consisted of pillars of NU, Ludicolo, Samurott, and Sazbuck. The importance of Vileplume's physical defense was evident here as well, as it allowed it to safely check the latter two threats. Roselia got absolutely crushed by Swords Dance variants of Samurott, with boosted Mega Horns cleaving through it effortlessly, and couldn't stop Sazbuck at all. Finally, Vileplume was not without its own gifts from the Dream World. While it had to give up Leech Seed to use it, Effect Spore was potentially vicious, providing a 30% chance to cripple 
multiple physical attackers. This was especially useful in playing offense while on defense. Vileplume's signature style against top threats such as Sock, Kangaskhan, Tauros, and Sosba. Overall, while Game Freak did their best to break Vileplume's spirit, it preserved and made itself a solid NU Pokemon once again. If giving Venusaur chlorophyll was a snide jab at Vileplume, giving Venusaur a Mega was outright mockery. However, Vileplume wasn't dissuaded, and it didn't fall below in NU. Matter of fact, it was better than in the generation prior. It was consistently able to do its job well. It checked dangerous attackers, threatened offensive switch-ins with Sludge Bomb Poison, and punished contact moves with Effect Spore, all while remaining healthy with Moonlight and Giga Drain. Sometimes it even ran Rocky Helmet to really punish contact moves. Chip damage and status in one fell swoop was pretty nasty, letting Vileplume do its job of, you guessed it, playing offense while on defense. Of course, Black Sludge's passive recovery remained the primary option. The offensive Pokemon Vileplume checked were top tier NU Pokemon. Hitmonchan, Primeape, Hariyama, Shiftry, and Samurott is a pretty impressive list of threats to be handling, especially when it was so good at staying healthy. Vileplume had some tricks up its sleeves for the last move slot too. Sleep Powder was always effective, but Hidden Power Fire gave Ferroseed and Kling Clang a nasty surprise. The third move it considered for its fourth slot was Worry Seed, and boy did it do some nasty stuff. Replacing the foe's ability with Insomnia had the game-breaking effect of preventing the dangerous Combine Mega Autono from using Rest, as well as removing Malamar's Contrary, meaning the superpower it relied on would drop its attack and defense instead of raising them. This was especially pertinent as Rest Talk Malamar was often used to switch into Vileplume and potentially wreak havoc, but with Worry Seed, Vileplume could easily turn the tables on it. While Vileplume primarily went with a defensive spread, it wasn't necessarily restricted to one. It'd lose its ability to tank heads for its team, but if that could be accounted for, then its trainer would reap massive benefits from Vileplume's fully invested modest attacks. Its stabs were incredibly difficult to switch into safely, especially with hazard support. What made them even more difficult to deal with were their secondary effects, as Sludge Bomb's ever irritating poison rate made it even harder for the opposition to weather Vileplume's attacks, while Giga Jane would restore huge amounts of health. The few Pokemon that didn't mind those stabs would get knocked around by hidden power, either fire for the aforementioned targets or ground for Garbodor and Skunk Tank while maintaining coverage on Steels, namely Steelix, Mawile, and Clink Clang. Overall, Vileplume was an absolutely excellent Pokemon in Oraz NU. It had just about perfected its style of turning defense into offense. And if Vileplume was just about perfect in Oraz NU, it left no room for any doubt at Sun and Moon NU. Once again, it effortlessly checked a huge amount of great offensive Pokemon, like Comfy, Sceptile, Whimsicott, Passimian, Steelix, Vikavolt, and Heliolus. Not only did it check them defensively, it often punished them for using their best moves thanks to Effect Spore's nasty 30% activation rate. Passimian's U-turn and close combat, Steelix's heavy slam, Comfy's draining kiss, they were all potentially ruined, and what were they going to do? Not use their best moves? Vileplume wasn't just going to run its old sets though. The seventh generation had given it a few gifts. While its stabs were already threatening offensively, Vileplume now gained the ability to boost them with growth, making them even more difficult to deal with. Giga Drain healed back absurd amounts of health while dishing out tons of damage, and Sludge Bomb was nightmarishly powerful. This made Vileplume incredibly difficult to deal with for defensive teams, and while it didn't even need to boost against offense, its stabs got the job done. There was just almost nothing that could switch into it safely. Steel types were scarce, as Steelix was was dominated by Vileplume, and Togedemaru couldn't even hurt it. Not to mention both wrists being slept by Effect Sport for touching it with their respective steel stab. Fire types certainly weren't able to actually come in on Vileplume. Incineroar, the best and bulkiest, absolutely hated Sludge Bomb and its poison rate. The only true poison immune check was Golbat, and even that wasn't reliable. Why? Because Vileplume had gotten another incredible move from Gen 7, Strength Sap, which may be the purest example of playing offense while on defense. It lowered the opponent's attack stat while restoring its own HP to the tune of the opponent's attack stat before the move was used. This meant it was healing a lot of HP and not taking that much damage in return. And alongside growth and effect spore, Vileplume actually beat Eviolite Brave Bird Golbat, which was absolutely insane. Strength Sap and effect spore made for a truly terrific combination. Most moves that hit Vileplume in the tier were contact, and with these two, Vileplume would simply beat most Pokemon using those moves without even losing HP itself. It wasn't even like 
it was training itself. It was simply beating everything. As if all that weren't enough, taking Vileplume's attacks had never been more difficult, not just because of growth, but even without any setup at all, thanks to Z crystals. Vileplume's acid downpour was simply brutal. It was so tough to handle that people's best method of handling opposing Vileplume was to just run more speed on their Vileplume. This was incredibly oppressive and unhealthy, and as a result, Vileplume was banned to NUBL, with its dominance over the tier never to be forgotten by its player base. Now, it couldn't quite establish a niche in RU, as it had tough competition in Tangela, and it was completely walled by Metagross, whose clear body blocked straight sap. However, it didn't matter. Vileplume had left its mark, and a resounding mark it was. Vileplume is back at it again in Generation 8 RU, establishing itself as the metagame's best defensive grass type. It handles both new faces like Rillaboom and old faces like Passimian with the same aplomb as it has for the past several generations. Vileplume eats up their attacks with ease, often with effect spore induced status, leaving the attacks users with a crippling parting gift before proceeding to harass the opponent's switch in with Sludge Bomb and its ever annoying poison rate. Growth and Sleep Powder are, as always, both terrific options, but the crown jewel of Vileplume Plume's moveset remains strength sap. It's so effective that it can even be used to survive something as powerful as a super effective choice band Copper Raja Heat Crash, meaning that weaker Pokemon like Scrafty don't stand a chance. Matter of fact, Vileplume even welcomes seeing something as dangerous as Snorlax, as it provides huge swaths of points to be siphoned out of Snorlax's attack into Vileplume's HP, allowing growth Vileplume to easily beat it one-on-one. -on -one. Overall, Vileplume looks like it's going to remain one of RU's best Pokemon for a while, and even if if the upcoming DLC, which is upcoming at the time of this video, pushes Vileplume down to NU, there is zero doubt Vileplume will absolutely dominate the tier once again, even without Z moves, and it would not be surprising to see it banned again. And before we end, we can talk about Vileplume in VGC briefly. Just like in singles, Vileplume's status as a third string chlorophyll grass poison type makes it hard to justify using it in doubles. Now you'd think there might be some opportunities for it due to the limited formats that VGC introduces, but the only regional dexes that Vileplume has had the pleasure of being included in, which are Kalos and Galar, both also feature the indisputably better plant in Venusaur. Well, that's half true. Venusaur may be in the Galar decks now, but before Pokemon Home, there was an absent evolutionary niche that Vileplume grew to fill for a time. For a brief period of time, Vileplume was able to function as a pseudo Venusaur, using chlorophyll alongside Torkoal and Ninetales to spread sleep powder. It was also used as a pseudo Lilligan, another chlorophyll sleep powder user who differentiates itself from Venusaur by carrying the move after you, which allowed Lilligan to help Torkoal move first and use Eruption. With Lilligan not in the Galar decks, Vileplume has been used to fill this role too. However, Vileplume didn't see anywhere near the level of success that Venusaur is currently garnering or that Lilligant has gathered in VGC 2017. And it's not hard to see why. With only 50 base speed, even a max speed Vileplume in Sun is susceptible to being outstripped by Pokemon with any form of speed control. Attempts to use Vileplume were not largely successful, and now that Venusaur is here, Vileplume can go back to lounging in the shade and snapping up unsuspecting bugs. But at the time of this video, competitive Gen 8 isn't even a year old, so we will just have to wait and see. And that's it! So how good was Vileplume actually? Well, overall, it was eternally in Venusaur's shadow, which was a shame because Vileplume became one of the best lower tier Pokemon in its own right. Sure, it had a miserable debut, and its sophomore season seemed satisfactory at best, but starting with Gen 3 Yuyu, it blossomed into a Pokemon that was good at its worst and dominant to the point of being banned at its best. Steel types tend to go to higher tiers, and Vileplume is one of the best Pokemon at abusing their absence in the tiers it winds up in. Its Sludge Bomb is truly venomous, and it's unfortunately not a VGC Pokemon at all since Venusaur exists. However, while Vileplume isn't a big, flashy OU superstar, it is a lower tier player's best friend or worst enemy, depending on whose side it's on. Thanks for watching, everyone, and thank you so much to the patrons for voting this Pokemon for the patron pick and for continued support of this channel, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Vileplume? How would you improve it? What would you give it to differentiate itself from Venusaur once and for all? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments and follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.